Welcome, I'm Mike Kane, CIO of Hedgepool. Today we're going to be talking about managing a portfolio like Dalio, Soros, and Paulson, and how to do with no derivatives, shorting, or illiquidity. To understand why we want to talk about this topic, really you have to take a step back and understand why we started Hedgepool. Started the firm in 2009 because the average American doesn't have access to the same kinds of sophisticated solutions that a high net worth person or an endowment would get through a manager like a, a Ray Dalio or a Paulson or a Soros. That's really what Hedgeable is all about, is bringing that kind of sophisticated investing down market so it's available to everyone in a, in a liquid and low cost format. So you might ask yourself, who are these guys and why are they even relevant? And then taking a step back, what is an alternative and what alternative concepts and techniques are in use today? Also, how has the financial crisis and the rise of the ETF, especially the ETF you know, managed portfolio, changed the game? Additionally, you know, how can some of the global macro strategies be mimicked with tactical asset allocation using ETFs? You might say to yourself, this isn't applicable to me, you know, I'm a buy and hold passive investor. If so, you know, are there opportunities to hedge passive portfolios to ETFs? And finally, we're going to talk a, a lot about uh, liquid alternatives, managed futures, alternative buckets, uh, etc. We'll discuss how tactical asset allocation and ETF managed portfolios can be used to change the risk return profile of an investor's overall portfolio to look alternative in nature at a fraction of the cost of using these alternative products or using funds that have high fees and illiquidity. This is the concept we label as redefining alternatives. So let's get started. Let me introduce you to our first global macro icon, Ray Dalio. Ray we have labeled as a cultural icon. This is a bit of an inside joke for anyone who's not familiar Bridgewater is known as having a very unique culture within the finance community, akin to a Google or Apple in the, app, in the tech world. Ray stresses the company culture, excellence, and truth. In fact, I worked under Ray at Bridgewater. So Bridgewater is known for two things. They're known for all weather and also pure alpha. The all weather is their brand name for the strategy uh, that they invented, which is now used in the industry as risk parity. And Pure Alpha is simply a portable alpha technique uh, that is now used by many other managers. If you're looking at risk parity, it's actually quite simple. The goal is to create a long-term -term portfolio that has an equal proportion of risk that can be attributed to areas of the portfolio that will do well in rising or falling growth and rising and falling inflation. The thought of this technique is that if you spread out the risk evenly, you can produce more stable growth over long time horizons because the assets should follow defined patterns and you can create alpha by picking the right securities in each bucket. Conversely, in a portable alpha technique, you take a beta portfolio, so let's say the S&P 500, and then you borrow money, so you lever up the portfolio to overlay the beta exposure with some potential source of alpha. This way you get exposure to the upside of the beta index. For example, the market goes up 30%, your portfolio will go up 30%. But then you try to add 5 to 10% a year in alpha by picking non-correlated assets that add value. As you can see in this chart uh, that we got from Bridgewater's marketing materials, you have two identical portfolios to the average portfolio manager's eye. But since the second portfolio has more non-correlated pieces, the information ratio, which is shown here by IR per slice, that is attributed back to the portfolio as a whole is a lot higher. In fact, it's more than double. Moving on to our second global macro icon is George Soros, best known as the co-founder of the Quantum Fund with Jim Rogers and Stanley Drunkenmiller. Soros is, is known as the guy who broke the Bank of England by putting on a short position worth billions on a day in England known as Black Wednesday. He's known for putting on large trades that seek to exploit changes in central bank policy, global interest rates, GDP growth, and inflation. Our third icon is John Paulson, the man who is known for putting on the greatest trade ever. If you look at the description of his firm, you might ask yourself, 
hey, I, I have no idea what this means. This all looks gi like gibberish to me. But believe me, this stuff is applicable to everyone and can be easily accomplished, which I'll go over in a second. If we take a look at a quote uh, that he had in 2006, you'll see just what he's talking about. In 2006, he realized that subprime mortgages were trading at comparable yields to U.S. Treasuries, yet they should have been treated as junk bonds. This, this is what he saw was, you know, this is an ultimate arbitrage opportunity for which he made billions in 2007. As you see here, he had a 570% return in his fund. There's thousands of these opportunities that pop up a year, mispricing, arbitrage, and event-driven scenarios, but you don't have to be a hedge fund billionaire to take advantage of it, which we'll go over in a few minutes. Now that we've gone through some of the global macro titans, I would like to you know, talk a little bit about you know, what is alternative, because it means different things to different people. You know, alternative in any form needs to accomplish two things. You know, change the risk port profile of the portfolio in a positive way during times when the market's in distress, you know, all while adding potential value through alpha over a full market cycle. When we say change in the risk profile, we mean lowering the bait of the portfolio, lowering the correlation to the market itself, and most importantly, reducing drawdowns. So here's a perfect example of this chart I've had up here. As you can see, uh, this is the performance of Bridgewater's Pure Alpha Fund from 2007 to 2011, which was a full market cycle. During the financial crisis, the portfolio was flat, which is good, while the market experienced a 55% drawdown. And during the market recovery, the portfolio gained nearly 50%. So this is the true definition of what alternative looks like. You protect on the downside, and then you capture some upside with lower drawdowns, volatility, correlations, and beta. Conversely, this chart is what alternatives shouldn't look like. This is a JP Morgan market neutral mutual fund product from the point of the market recovery in 2009 until the end of May 2014. What if you, as an investor, because this asset class is labeled alternative, you allocate a piece of your portfolio to it, hoping to receive alternative benefits? So the market doubles, but then your JP Morgan fund received none of the upside. To be labeled alternative, you need to protect on the downside, but capture some upside. So taking a step back, you know, how did alternative investing get to the forefront of the investing public? You know, institutions such as Harvard and Yale popularized the use of alternatives as a piece of their asset allocation going back you know, more than a few decades. And more generally, alternatives were increasingly popularized post-2008 as asset managers used the financial crisis as an opportunity to educate their advisor base on the potential benefits of utilizing alternatives in a traditional portfolio allocation. I wager that you know, most people that are looking at this presentation now have used alternatives as a direct result of the financial crisis. As the scars began to heal from the crisis, many people you know, began to ask themselves, wait a second here, you know, these ETF things are really starting to blow up. Why am I paying 2 and 20 fees? Can't I just do this myself? And this is where firms like Hedgeable and our peers like F Squared and Good Harbor come in. This is the section we like to call the rise of the tactical ETF manager. So let's go back to the example of the Bridgewater Pure Alpha Fund. Just look at the drawdowns of that fund versus the S&P 500 during the full market cycle pre and post financial crisis. And if you look at it, it's truly amazing. You know, with the growth of ETFs, the question became, you know, why can't we do a global macro strategy very simply ourselves? And the answer is we can and we could do it with no leverage, shorting, or derivatives. We don't have to take large sum prime bets like Paulson, you know, lever up a portfolio like Dalio, or put on $10 billion in currency exposure like Soros. We could buy one ETF that tracks these markets with the click of a mouse and move in and out of them quickly. So let's just take a look at this chart. It's going to look familiar to the Bridgewater chart. You know, using a few ETFs, look what we and F squared, uh, who's compared to us, another tactical manager, could do against the S&P 500. We're using our proprietary dynamic advisor technology system and F squared, their alpha sector technology system. This is the power of the ETF and the rise of the new breeded ETF managed portfolio providers. 
No longer do we need to buy dangerous futures contracts, short markets, or borrow money. We can buy one liquid and inexpensive security that gives us broad market exposure. But you might ask, you know, how is this possible? There must be market timing here. It's really quite simple. You know, if you look at the ETF, uh, excuse me, if you look at the global macro guys, their formula is strikingly similar. It's a basic risk on, risk off methodology. No matter what market they are investing in, uh, so if you go back to the Bridgewater risk parity, you can see how correlated rising growth, falling growth, and rising inflation, falling inflation assets are. And that's what we show here in this chart. So if we know that these securities act in certain patterns, can we not mimic the same thing with a simple risk on, risk off ETF methodology, moving from spawns to stocks and vice versa as markets moves? This can be simplified even further. So why not just move from SPY, or you could pick any large cap ETF as a proxy here, an AGG or, or similar fixed income ETF, or to cash if we're in an environment where bonds and cash are negative. This is the very definition of being ta tactical. If you look at this chart here, is the beta and correlation of that same strategy I showed a few slides ago. The one that missed a large part of the S&P correction, yet was able to match the upside of the market. Just look at how dramatically lower the beta and correlation are. And this strategy holds the market itself, so the beta and correlation, you would say, should be one. All this is with a simple risk on, risk off kind of strategy. Same kind of technique that Bridgewater uses in those few charts that I showed a few slides ago. Why be exposed, exposed to the market when it's most volatile? Why be exposed when it's going down? Conversely, why not be exposed to the market when it's least volatile, when it's going up? You know, some of you are probably saying to yourself, I, this sounds too good to be true, this doesn't work. You can't try to tactfully manage a portfolio. So I'm not here to try to disprove your theory because there's really some solid academic work done via modern portfolio theory, Vanguard, DFA, etc. But what if you do have a strict buy and hold methodology, or, or even if you can't be tactical because of potential tax consequences? Now let's take a look at how our discussion relates to you. This section I call hedging with ETFs for the non-active e uh, investor. Even if you're not willing to be active, there should still be ways to hedge potential downside. So going back to our Bridgewater chart here, as you see here, we use Bridgewater's examples a lot. Uh, we can achieve this, you know, why can't we achieve this by being tactical? You know, I don't want to be a downer, but you know, we probably can't do it if you're not going to be tactical. But at least we could try to provide some of the downside protection that they can provide uh, when they're using their derivatives and their futures and their options. So we look at this next chart, you can see what the correlations are of a typical diversified ETF portfolio. So if you're a buy and hold investor, this might be a typical portfolio that's diversified across asset classes. So for the most part, the correlations are, are extremely high. If we, if we remember back to the Bridgewater chart, the chart on correlations, um, when we talked about the risk parity, you'll note that during a market correction, you know, this kind of correlation among securities is really going to hurt you. The goal is to get as many non-correlated assets in the portfolio as possible without negatively impacting performance, of course. With this next chart, we have shown the correlation differences by adding some more alternative kinds of asset classes, such as currencies, mortgage-backed bonds, inflation indices, etc. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, is this going to be a panacea? No, but it's going to be better than doing nothing. You know, to truly manage a portfolio like Soros and Paulson and Dalio without using any leverage or any derivatives for that matter, you'll need to be somewhat tactical to get the full benefit. So finally, I, what I want to discuss here is whether it's better to use alternative products or have an alternative approach to managing money. And they are really completely different concepts. Many alternative asset classes have really worked great in the past, but in the face of difficult market environments like 2008, you know, they didn't really hold up. And that was when correlations went to one. Additionally, are they worth the cost? 
If you take a look at this slide, we show the expense ratios and management fees of some popular alternative mutual funds, ETFs, and hedge funds. When you add in the fact that most investors allocate to multiple alternative products and asset classes, or sometimes charge fund-to-fund fund 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 fees on top of uh, those advisory fees, expenses can really add up. So we think it might be time to think about moving the current alternative paradigm forward and shift the level of thinking in the direction of redefining alternatives. So you might remember that term back from one of the first slides that, that I showed. We think about how alternatives can be redefined, we think about the rise of ETF managed portfolio. With a properly managed tactical model, you can favor favorably change the risk profile of any portfolio, and it can be instituted at a fraction of the cost. Instead of viewing alternatives as a silo or bucket, now you're taking an entirely alternative view of the portfolio as a whole, and every asset class component of that portfolio. When you think about it, you know, this is really a true epiphany in finance. There are many asset managers who are thinking about things the same way. You know, how can we manage a portfolio more alternatively? Why be invested in the market when it's going down? Why not dynamically react to what's going on? This is exactly why we developed at Hedgeball some of our technology systems, including our dynamic advisor technology system. Any model we manage is dynamically managed. So it can be 100% invested in cash. So going back to what we've really harped on here is, you know, markets are going down, why be invested in the market? Why have that downside risk and that downside exposure? It's the same thing F squared, Good Harbor, and many of these other tactical managers preach. And this really is very simple to do now with the simple risk on, risk off techniques. We let market conditions dictate what we do, so we're not trying to tie the market or predict what's going to happen. We don't do things on set timetables. Why make a change to a portfolio when it's going up? So if the market's going up in a year like 2013, why make changes? On the flip side, why sit and do nothing if it's going down? If you think about it, it's really not that much different than how Dalio or Soros think of things. We're just doing it on a much more high-level basis and in a format that's very easy to market, very easy to implement, and very low cost to our clients. So really what Hedgeable is all about is providing a low-cost, multi-asset class, managed account platform using some of these same techniques that we went over here that these billionaire asset managers use and being able to prov provide some really disruptive investing products that focus on low drawdowns, low volatility, and low correlation. So I invite you at any time to contact us if you have any questions about anything in this presentation or any of the products that we offer. Thank you.